Hi everyone, my name is Danny Krondin from Leisure Travel Van Enthusiast. Again today, I want to share with you my latest project. It's my solar panel complete overall. Before diving into the install itself, here's a quick look at how I choose the right solar panel for my RV. The first step was getting up on the roof and measuring everything. My goal was to fit as much solar as possible on top of my 2014 Murphy bed, while still leaving some space to step around for basic maintenance and inspection. From there, I ruled out flexible and semi-flexible panels pretty quickly. I have used semi-flexible before, but they don't last, and worse, they have been known to damage RV roof. I was also tempted by SIG's panels for their super resilience to shading and their lightweight, but I just couldn't find a reliable way to mount them with enough airflow underneath to protect the thin fiberglass roof. Polycarbonate standoff and other mounting idea were just weren't convincing enough. So I decided to go with the tried and true rigid solar panels, and specifically the Renault G100 watts and type with 16 bus bar. These use newer, more efficient N type cells, grade A, which outperform traditional P type panels, especially in high temperature and over time. This 16 bus bar design also helps improve shading tolerance. It's not quite as good as SIG's or Renault's own Shadow Flux 9 bus bar model, but it's a solid compromise. Choosing 100 watt panels also gave me enough flexibility to leave small gap between them, just enough space to step for roof access and maintenance. Okay, today we are going to replace the old GoPower uh, flexible solar panel and the uh, old 90 watt came with the LTV and I will replace it with uh, the new Renogy N-Type 16 bus bar. So I'm confirming the size and I will cut the template out of the shipping box. Okay, that's the first one. We'll put one there. You get the point. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this one eight. I keep some spaces to walk around. Not easy, but it's going to be like that. Here are some tools we're gonna to need: some aluminum foil for patchwork, uh, gloves, rags, body knife, acetone, uh, cleaning agent, uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, screwdriver, those wonderful square head screw screwdriver, the red one, uh, some butyl tape, and if you want extra uh, fast work, uh, oscillating tools, tool, uh, and the uh, uh, caulking removal blade. Did I ever told you how much I love those square head screwdriver? So LTV use a very, uh, very common screw. It's harder with one hand, but you guys get the point. I will clean that thing up, remove the the die core, and let's see uh, where we we go after that. <laughs> So it's the same deal for the TV antenna, the one, same, same thing. Just make sure to disconnect the bottom part. So my RV is a 2014. Never had any infiltration. Die core is combined with the, the butyl tape is pretty amazing. I'm second guessing myself about using the VHB tape. Much nicer. So we are at day number two. I was rushed by rain yesterday. I will use the old Batwing antenna base to make myself a, a template for the, the piece of flashing aluminum that I will uh, install to, uh, to cover the hole. So I drill some holes and make sure they all fit. 
I will apply butyl tape. Okay, now I will uh, put some decor around the edge and over the head screw. Okay, I will show you how to install those uh, little brackets. It, those are called Z brackets. We just have to use the provided the fastener here when you purchase the, the Z bracket from Renault So. We'll have to make sure those are sticking out before bonding them to the roof. Okay, I will lay down some panels to see how things will look. It'll be perfect. So today uh, I will start the installation of the solar panels. I will use some scaffolding here to ease up the process. And also I've uh, ruled out the use of VHB tape after talking uh, with uh, LTV, uh, two different dealers, RV dealership, and uh, two independent uh, installers. So I will use the, the common method of screws and potty tape, butyl tape and uh, lap sealant. So let's begin that uh, wonderful task. My installation calls for two panels being in series. So what we see in the next segment is just one MC4 connector, uh, let's say the positive uh, plug into the negative MC4 connector of the second solar panel. And I make sure the connector is under the solar panel itself, not exposed to the weather. Okay, I use some painter's tape to mark the corners of, of those uh, Z-brackets and I, I will drill a pilot hole and use those screws. So this is the butyl tape. I will cover it under those Z-bracket, I will put the panel back, drill the pilot hole and screw, and screw the fastener. So, I will just flip the installer panel over and continue the installation. So pilot hole, just a little bit smaller than the screw shaft. I sure love those uh, square head screws. I will finish them using a manual screwdriver. Okay, I uh, I torque uh, the, those screws. Finally, it's uh, number 10, 3 quarter of an inch. Uh, I kept about the same screws that LTV used on my uh, original solar panel. And the when I torque it a little bit, the butyl tape uh, hose around the, the Z-bracket. So I think it's going to be just fine. Okay, once the panel is installed, now I will cover the Z-bracket with uh, the Dicol self-leveling caulking agent and uh, call it a day. So uh, covering the bracket uh, completely avoid uh, water pooling inside the, the L bracket. Okay, I will try to reach the uh, inside edge of each Z bracket using that uh, three, f five eighth of an inch uh, hose. I will drill the, the nozzle and use some uh, copper wire. My nozzle extension worked pretty well for its uh, purpose. I was able to reach the inside of each bracket, but it wasn't neither fun nor easy. Okay, I locate all the, the screws and you know, tight them down. It oozes almost everywhere around the perimeter. I will cover this with the decor. Make sure you replace those components first. Should be a click like that. Little ripple there.
That's it.